All right, so good evening and welcome to another excite, excited episode of uh, the Men's Lounge. We're here. Obviously, when you know it's 9 p.m. on a Thursday, definitely you know we're going to come your way with lots and lots and lots of discussions. So we've had we've had such a good week. Uh, um, COVID cases, you know, it's always I've always been an advocate on this uh, COVID issues. COVID cases going down, 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 and we are excited about it. Um, vaccines in town. I, I, mean, I said the other time that the beginning of vaccines are the, I, I mean, defines or starts the end of uh, an uh, of of a pandemic. And so once the vaccines are in, we, we get. But don't get too excited. Other countries are getting third waves and fourth waves. Don't don't just get too excited. It just it just could happen. So let's still keep the protocols. Uh, let's keep safe and let's wash our hands. Use the sanitizer and then the nose mask is very very important. So thanks to the people in the studio. Thanks to everybody. We are going to bring you this episode. I'll go on my very first break. When I'm back, I'll introduce the topic and I'll introduce the people in the studio, specifically my guests. Quite interesting we have today. Please stay with us. <laughs> Welcome back if you're joining us. We just got into the men's lounge. And of course, I have two people I'll be introducing, like I said. Today, we are discussing cohabitation. In the end, we'll try to find out who it benefits more, whether it benefits uh, the, the man or the woman, or indeed, whether it even benefits any of the partners. But we'll be discussing cohabitation. And so, you'd realize that um, some people want to get married, others um, don't want to get married. Others want to stay apart. There are even people who marry and they don't even stay together. But others are not even married, but they, they, they agree to live together and possibly even live like they are married. I mean, these are all kinds of obvious uh, relationships that uh, in time we have seen. And this is what we are going to be discussing today. But the specific discussion is cohabitation. So in the studio with me today, I have two beautiful, you know, I still, I, I still like using beautiful I'll explain one day. One day I'll explain. <laughs> so two beautiful gentlemen. Uh, they are both not married. And so you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, I have with me Leslie Fiadoyo. Uh, Leslie happens to be a lawyer. You know, he put it to you. You know, my people. Yeah. <laughs> so Leslie happens to be a lawyer. Fine gentleman. I also have demographics. I mean, yeah. you can only know him by demo. Demo, demographics on demo. He loves cars just like I do, and uh, he has a car show. He's a host of a car show. So when you, I'm sure when you, s you see him, you figure him out, right? So guys, good to see you. Thank Leslie, you. Thank demo. You. Thank you. Thank you. Charlie from afar. Eh? Yeah. From afar. COVID has worried us. Well. Charlie. Eh? When is he leaving? Ah. Yeah, anybody knows when it, the COVID is leaving? Maybe unless we ask the scientists and the religious bodies. <laughs> Religious sport, don't try. Please, 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 please. Let's let let's just say you never said that. So 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 today we want to uh, look at cohabitation, as to how cohabitation has become an issue. There, I'm not sure, but maybe in the end we also try to look at reasons why people rather will, will begin to consider cohabitation. There, there might be specific reasons that sometimes you may you may not even know, but sure. in the end we'll find out. So let's let's start by trying to define what cohabitation is. Leslie, you want to take that? Yes. Put yes, it to yes, us. Put yes, it to yes, us. Yes. <laughs> oh, well, to explain mm -hmm. um, very, very, very simply, mm -hmm. cohabitation um, is a situation that um, arises when two people, mm -hmm. a couple, okay, decide to live together as though they were husband and wife, mm -hmm. but without any legal or uh, religious uh, recognition. So they put themselves out there. Everybody knows they live together here. There are certain things that they do that uh, involves duties and rights, like they were husband and wife. Mm -hmm. But the law does not recognize them as husband and wife, nor does religion also recognize them as husband and wife. So that is cohabitation in a very, 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 very basic sense. And so it definitely involves the two the two people or the two parties agreeing to live together. Yes, voluntarily. Voluntarily. Voluntarily, mm. yes. Mm. Mm. Devil, <laughs> you have some different... Uh, the lawyer there, you think, tell us... I think I support, like I support what he said. Mm. Um, at the end of the day, it's between the two people who want to live together. But usually there are reasons why they want to live together. Some financial reasons mm -hmm. and all, but... Um, in the cultural setting, we have families that frown on it, and we have families that may not talk about it. But 
when you take different regions, everybody goes for what they want to benefit from it. Yeah. Mm. So basically, two people living together, whether happily or sadly, they are still living together. Well, and I'll, I'll, I'll urge you to start sending your messages. Let us know what you also think about cohabitation, whether uh, what the reasons probably may be. I mean, if you're in one, let us know what your reasons were. You can send us um, your, your messages on our, on our social media handles. We'll start with uh, WhatsApp, which is 020-222-2054. I repeat, 020-222-2054. And on all our social media platforms, at ETV Ghana. Send us your messages, and then we'll add you to the conversation. So, Devo, you did mention that there could be some reasons. Yes. Can we try to enlist some of these reasons? Well, what, what, I mean, what are some of these reasons? Um, when you when you take this issue carefully, you look at the fact that financial reasons, mm -hmm. um, some people to because of trust issues, some also want to test the waters before they decide to marry. Which waters again? <laughs> <laughs> How do you test waters whilst you are cohabiting with somebody? I mean, are you not then married already? No, for marriage it has uh -huh. legal backings, but the cohabitation, I mean. There's no legal backing to it. So when the two of you have issues or have fights, you can choose to go your way. Mm. So sometimes the challenges people go through mm -hmm. will force them to what? Cohabit. You get, for instance, you're having family issues or you're having financial issues or people actually cohabit to, to as a payback for a favor done them by maybe the man or the woman. Okay. Yes. That's well, so then would that mean that if for example if, if I'm if, if if my reason is to pay a woman back by cohabiting with a woman, meaning that what she's done something for me in the past and so and she's asked that I I, I, I cohabit with her or I, I don't I'm no, not she she may not ask that you cohabit with her, mm -hmm. but um psychologically yeah. you'll be forced to pay back or um show some sort of appreciation to the person. Yeah, so okay. Okay, the person comes to visit you one weekend, stays for a while, not moving. You don't know how to even say, oh, you need to go back. So ah, you end up... Just say it. No, no, no. Ah. That's a different matter. Let's together. see. This one's, this one's <laughs> be for right now. It'll be mass exams or it'll be science exams. Yes, this so, one, tell them, uh, say, Jack, you forgo. It's not easy like that. Uh, yes. Even when your boys visit you, is it easy to say, Charlie? Oh, boys, have you go lock their doors up then? You <laughs> That's yes, exactly. So, they don't come um, as a payback, I believe, or as a way of showing appreciation to the mm. person, um, people do that, but some people too is financial gains. For instance, if the man has a lot of money, mm -hmm. the lady will move in and be with him because of what what she will get. The call okay. for yes, and if the woman has a lot of money, the guy may move in, but then sometimes it's difficult for guys to put their pride aside. I mean, guys are proud and then move in, but actually, when there is milk flowing, who will not open the mouth? <laughs> <laughs> Leslie, yes. what, what could be some of the reasons? Well, I believe um, some people don't want to place definitions on things they do. Mm. You know, um, they would rather have a very um, laissez-faire attitude towards life. They want to avoid the whole tag um, associated with certain activities. Mm. So they meet each other. They are madly in love. Hey, why don't we stay together? I mean, forget about the whole institution called marriage. We can get the same benefits from staying together, like uh, as if we were married. And the difference is just name. Yes, the difference <laughs> is just name. <laughs> but is the difference really name? Ah, uh, but is that, is that what it is? <laughs> uh, the difference is the name and then the uh, legal consequences that come with it. Well, yes, yes. So some people just don't like the whole tag. Mm. Okay. The whole formality stuff. They want to go freestyle. I mean, why should I get married to you before we can live together? I mean, so then that's one. Others would also want to uh, more like use cohabitation as a demo before getting married. Then you know what demo is. No, you know, uh, when we were children, we used to have games. Yeah. Uh, if we didn't get a full game, we had the demo. The demo version. Aha, uh -huh, yes, the demo version. So Play for two seconds and it's gone. Two seconds, three <laughs> seconds, and then that is it. Yeah. So people would want to cohabitate, you know, just to know each other mm. before, if they want to get married, they will get married. Uh -huh. um, I don't believe you should meet somebody 
and then the very first instance you get to live with the person is when you are married. No, you must get to know the person in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening. And cohabitation gives you that arrangement. Mm. So people will do all these things just to. And of course, because of the, uh, the love that is between them. I mean, when we began, I said cohabitation is a voluntary arrangement. And love makes you do things voluntarily. Mm. So if you have feelings for each other enough to sustain this arrangement, I mean, why not? Why should you wait until uh, the status of marriage is conferred on you? I mean, we can live together peacefully and then happily. So these are some of the reasons people would want to, to cohabitate. Interesting. Yes. So wha one of the things I picked from the discussion is that I mean, it has to do with commitment, obviously, because yes. then it means that either parties or, or, or one of them I mean, or both don't or are not ready to commit, if, I, if I'm right to say so, uh, could be one of the reasons why people cohabit. Because then you don't want to be, or commitment doesn't come in here. Oh, it comes in. It comes in. I mean, um, commitment and communication. Or actually. perhaps commitment com commitment to the institution of marriage not just commitment to the relationship but com committing to the institution of marriage maybe yes yes, yes. i think so yeah. i think i think people are scared of the whole idea of marriage you know, mm. when it is presented to them in a very very you know marriage involves um, certain um, uh, parameters some people would want to shy away from these parameters mm. so there might not be the commitment for marriage, but there might be commitment for cohabiting with each other. Mm. Aha. So I think commitment, because it is commitment that will make you voluntarily live with somebody. Mm -hmm. I mean, if there is no commitment, why do you even uh, decide to live with somebody and then present yourself as husband and wife? <laughs> uh, yes, even though, uh, even though in reality you are not. So I think commitment forms 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 a basic. Let let, let me try and limit this to us as men. Yes. So yeah. our men naturally just afraid to commit to marriage. Huh. <laughs> demo. So this one, this one I is for demo. I think, I, think, <laughs> I think most men are. Really? Yes. Why? Or some men are. Men I thought, I thought, I thought our egos and our pride should always want us to show. No, like no, 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 no. Marriage is a different ball game altogether. Yeah. I mean, married people, when you're married mm -hmm. as guys or as ladies, when you're married as guys, trust me, you don't even have time to even go out there and play the usual football with the area uh, boys. You know, it's like your responsibility increases. So you would want to, you know, redirect your focus onto your family. Yeah. Mm. Do you get it? And the marriage thing, from what we have seen, it comes with a lot of responsibilities. Uh, I mean, I, I think I agree with you on the issue of redirecting your focus, especially now that you're beginning to make family. But should it be the main reason why you cannot still have your social life? Oh, you can I mean, you can have your social life within or outside marriage. It basically depends on you and your partner. Mm. I mean, you should make your partner understand that this is how you are. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're a social, uh, if you're a sociable person, uh, your partner should be able to understand this and appreciate it. Yeah. So that even if marriage comes in it, I mean, this is you from the beginning. Uh, he or she should be able to take you as you are. Just as you are. Nothing has changed. Just as you are. Nothing yeah. has changed. So it doesn't always work like that. <laughs> <laughs> I think from the beginning, they will begin to take you as you are, but if it keeps happening, like, hey, what's mm. going on? It seems you mm. love your friends more than me. But, 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 be, okay, fine. Between the man and the woman, yes. which of them is, 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 is scared of that marriage commitment? I think the men. I think men. Men. Mm. Let's, yes. be, let's, let's be, be real. <laughs> let's be honest oh, on TV. Oh, I mean, <laughs> it's why we are here. <laughs> men. Men. Let's be honest yeah. on TV. I think men men are scared of the whole institution mm. called marriage, yes. But I'm, I'm sure some men don't agree. Oh. oh, yes. I mean, for every rule, there's an exception. Mm. So, yeah. But I'm talking uh, in terms of um, um, general, general, general. So, so usually, who, who, who does the moving into? Is it, is it the, the woman that moves or I the man? Well, I think the woman usually does the moving in. Leslie, are you cohabiting with someone? Currently, no. <laughs> Devil, <laughs> are you cohabiting with someone? No. You sure? Yes. Hmm. I see. So, in 
other cases that you have seen who 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 usually moves into into whose place um the cases i've seen uh the lady actually the other ladies actually move in with the guys the ladies move more eh? yes the they like to walk around more because eh? guys want to own the space and know mm. that hey they're the big boys so the ladies usually move in more and yeah <laughs> i think i think i think i think it has a religious uh, it has a religious undertone to it. You know, most people are religious. And if you look at what the Bible says, it says that, um, and so the man would leave his father's house and then take unto himself a woman. I mean, if you look at the connotation there, uh, the woman doesn't have to necessarily um, invite the man over. It mm -hmm. is the man who <coughs> takes the step to actually build for himself mm -hmm. and then invites the uh, the woman over even if you go to the story of creation i mean before the woman was created adam had his own self-contained called uh, eden where everything was in check he had named all the animals and stuff like that eve simply had to, oh, to hold, to hold on this, this is just by the way adam named all the animals yes i mean interesting uh, according to biblical biblical standards so he named mosquito <laughs> 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 anyway so yeah Yes, yeah, so so I think it has a religious connotation to it, and so sublimely, uh, the man is is expected to have his own place and make the move, and then make the move, mm -hmm. and then the woman is expected to to join her. So uh, there the, the aren't, or there could be cases where the, the men also move in to join them. Oh, yes. sure, oh, there, yes. there, are, there are cases. Yes. For what, instance, what? if the lady is more well to do, mm -hmm. why not? The man will move in, depending on the circumstance the man finds himself in. But it's usually difficult for men to just move in and go and stay with the lady. Because our egos won't even allow us. Exactly. So. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I think it's about understanding. I mean, uh, if you get a woman who is understanding enough that, okay, even though you are the man, you get to move in, I still recognize you as the man. I mean, there's nothing oh. wrong with it. Yeah, I think it's about understanding. Co to what extent understanding? See, there is something about... Um, gender male and female mm -hmm. subconsciously the man knows that hey i am not okay staying here your friends are even surprised you are living with a lady and the lady knows that hey you're in my space so you might do something and she'll one day open up to you and go like and they remind you I, on the <laughs> space <laughs> <laughs> do you get it so it depends on you the better woman. day guard eh? yeah uh, it depends on the woman but I think I think it's not a blanket statement. It yeah, depends on it the probably woman. depends yeah. on the woman. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I, I I kind of agree. So so could also um, the reasons why p uh, people decide to cohabit could it could it be associated with doubts, maybe mistrust? Sure. That's Charlie. I don't trust this guy. I I I I'm in doubts. Let me rather move in with him and you know see what he feels or he looks like. I could, think could, could, could doubts be, be a reason? It depends. I think doubt is rather um, a preventive measure instead of um, an encouraging measure. I mean, if you have doubts about something, you don't do it at all. Mm. Yes. So I don't think it's doubts. I think it's rather, like I said, uh, okay, like Demo said, testing the waters. Mm. You know, <laughs> we have to live together for a while. I have to get to know you, I mean, your mood in the morning. You have to get to know my mood in the morning. Yeah. You have to get to know my temperament in the afternoon. And then when I come back from work. So it is not doubt. I think it's rather uh, hope. Mm. Yes, hope will make people want to live together, want to live together. and know themselves better. Yes. All right, so keep, keep your messages coming. The number is 020-222054. I repeat, 020 2220254. So Leslie, ask ask demo who is Kun. Kun. Is there anybody called Kun? Anybody called? Kun. Kun. Uh, this I should ask you who is Kun. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so this is coming from one of uh, our viewers. Oh. Hello, my name is William. Uh, well, hey, now you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's my Korean doctor. <laughs> okay. So Hello, my name Charlie is William. Boy, he has a See you. <laughs> and you wait, let me finish. Oh, okay. So William says, my <laughs> wife now, who was my girlfriend, okay. then cohabitated um, when it was necessary at the time she needed to be close 
to her workplace. Necessity of proximity to avert the cost of transportation. Yeah. So we both agreed it was the prudent thing to do. I must say, no, we, okay, so I must say it really worked for, uh, for our marriage. Please tell Demo, Kun is ready to co habit. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> maybe on this note, <laughs> Demo should be telling us exactly who Kun is and not just a Korean doctor. Demo. Oh, Kun is just a Korean doctor. It's okay, we can, we can, we can have that discussion <laughs> after. Yeah. Yeah. Backstage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll take it back, backstage. Yeah. All right, so this is also coming from Ajoa. Ajoa says, well, is it, isn't it obvious that men like sex? And so they will always call for cohabitation so they can easily have access. Oh. As for men. Hmm. So, Ajoa from Bachona. <laughs> Leslie. This one so, there. women don't like sex. Well, that's what Ajoa is saying. So, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. <laughs> Ajoa, this is your message there. Well, Leslie doesn't seem to agree with you. But men don't have to... Uh, men don't need to, to cohabit with... With, with a woman to get sex. Mm, I mean, yeah. that is one thing. They can they can get it. Men can get sex anywhere they want. Mm. It's the same as women. Women can yes, also get it anywhere exactly. they want. Exactly. So, uh, no, but, but to some extent, that reason is also there for some people. You get it. Some people also, it's because of the sex aspect. Mm. Yes. And they don't want you going anywhere else. So they don't mind being available to you as a when, as a way of keeping you in check. I see. Yes. Um, which is which is right anyway. I mean, to to avoid having multiple yeah. partners and all those. Yeah. I I, well, I I some way somehow agree with you, <laughs> but not entirely. So, you know, the text message that came earlier did speak of how cohabiting had helped their marriage. Yeah. Okay. Does it come across that cohabitating could be a good test for marriage? Yes. I mean, uh, like I said earlier on. Um, I think the most unfortunate thing anybody can do to him or herself mm. is to get to know his or her partner um, right after marriage without any attempt to even live together for a while. I remember um, an elderly person told me that get to know your partner, you know, it's because you guys haven't lived together for a while. That is why certain arguments come up. But if you guys live for a while before marriage, you would get to, however short a time it is, you get to know yourselves. I mean, you get to know yourselves so that at least you know how to um, relate with each other. Mm. Um, getting to know somebody shortly after marriage for the first time by living together, uh, I think uh, it, it is not the right way to go, uh, if you ask me. Yes, it is not the right way to go. You should get to know each other before the institution of marriage comes. You, you, you don't, you don't think, you don't think this will probably be subject to your opinion only. I, 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 mm. I say this because in 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 the past, a couple of years or like I mean a decade ago. Yes. I mean we got married to strangers. Your father will bring uh, Eja Konimo's daughter <laughs> that they've known. Her, since she was going, she's a good girl. Mm. So, uh, uh, Demo, you have to marry. And you, they marry and they live together 40, 50 years and wow. they are very okay. Wow. Now, would we <laughs> then, what has changed? Because then if, if, if cohabiting obviously comes across as a good thing or a yeah. good test for marriage, these other marriages in the past didn't have that prior to mar marrying. And, mm. so, and they have lived on really good. Sure. So then what has changed? Should we say modernity is just exactly. turning things around and so exactly. we have to? Sure. No. <laughs> Leslie, come again. This <laughs> one. <laughs> unless, unless you want to limit it to only your opinion to say what well, you think. That's what you said anyway, yes, that you think. Yes, yes. But I think so. From a personal experience. A I personal guess. experience. Yes. Sounds like he's cool habit. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> now that you're being Formally. a <laughs> currently, currently, currently I'm not. Oh, I but mean. you were before. Yes. You want to share some experience in that? Backstage. Backstage on this one. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Oh, but there's a precedent for backstage. So, yeah, let me also add mine. Okay, yeah. so I have one one. Yeah. There's yeah. not going to be any yeah. backstage yeah. again yeah. from yeah. here. Yeah. Okay, all right. And so, so are we? Then would you actually agree that so cohabiting is, is a good test for marriage? I mean, prior to marriage. Sure, sure, sure. So that was many when you feel it's not good, you don't go don't, into it. Now we have cases of people killing their wives oh. or their girlfriends left and right. Yeah. Because of Issues we are not aware of. Mm -hmm. But when you live with someone, 
you know when the person gets angry, you know what makes the person angry, you know the good and the bad side of the person. You even get to know the person's friends. Mm -hmm. You can marry somebody whom you think you know, but the friends he has, they can be what? Um, thieves and all those kind of things. So for me, once the two people agree to be together, mm -hmm. why not? Yeah. Do you get it? And it's nicer if the family is even involved. Like they know that, okay, you're living with this person, they know that your security is assured. But if your family is not aware, it's like you're living with somebody they don't know, if something happens, who do we call? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, that's, that's, that's a, a point I believe well made. But you see, have you thought of our culture also? What our culture, you know, has, has grown us to become? Okay. Where no, no, no family would encourage... And Panache. And Yeah. To the extent of corner cutting and in China. And I said, you guys go live together. That's true. Unless there is a clearly... I believe unless there is a clearly defined purpose that, okay, be our between the things, huh? And so, uh, yeah, money on a a week or two, you oh. know, to, sh or to share, say... I don't know, but no, I know, see, I know, that's what I, I know think. somebody actually who is cohabiting, mm -hmm. or they are cohabiting, and their parents is okay with it, right in Ghana here. Yeah. Mm. You get it. People travel abroad, learn a lot of things, and come down, and they practice it. You get it. But culturally, I don't think families will allow you like no, that. No. Yes. No. Because, I mean, you have to go through the process mm. to pick the <coughs> lady from her home. Exactly. To your home okay so let me take this from abdul jamil abdul jamil says good evening my name is abdul jamil from newtown in some way around it benefits both gender in order to get to know each other before getting married to each other as to what is really causing problems in mar many marriages now hmm. we don't know yeah, well so abdul a uh, point well made thank you for contributing yeah. so you definitely agree that the whole culture thing could also be Usually, would say no, considering our kind of culture that we have. Yes, of course. And I so, mean, would we blame it on trends again? That yeah, the current trends of people and how technology people are evolving and all that. And so now, cohabiting should be like a thing that families will possibly encourage. Um, for me, sure, families will encourage it at some point, depending on where you're coming from. Mm. Now, look at the benefit of it. There are people who are cohabiting and their families are benefiting from it. Mm -hmm. Their siblings are benefiting from it. Mm -hmm. They get it. So it's getting to a point where it will be normal in the eyes of um, people growing up. Interesting. I think, I think, I think culturally, um, if you look at it from a, uh, the cultural point of mm -hmm. view, mm -hmm. you know, uh, marriage in Ghana is not only... Um, a union between the man and the woman, but, families. but also families. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, we can't take away the aspect of the involvement of families. Mm -hmm. um, in the Western world, um, a man and a woman can get married in front of a priest, they alone, in not um, two formal dresses. I mean, and then it's done. But you see, in Ghana, where we are deeply rooted in culture and mm. customs mm. and doing what um, culture dictates. I mean, you can never ever take somebody's daughter and then go and then go and then go <laughs> go have it. That sounds like I mean, kidnapping already. Yeah? Uh, yes, exactly. <laughs> okay, I mean. so on this kidnapping note, uh, we'll go on a very a second break. Uh, please stay with us. We'll be back shortly. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, we are still in the lounge discussing cohabiting. Uh, who does it benefit the most? Whether it benefits either of the parties. Who, I mean, who who does it benefit the most? And what really is the purpose? What are the reasons why some people or most people cohabit? And uh, what does it lead to? What are the positives? What are the negatives? So I'll take this message. Before we left, it was Leslie talking about kidnapping. <laughs> so you know <laughs> what I meant by that. And so... This is coming from Dave, and Dave says, Hello, I'm Dave. Is it okay to to have another side lady whilst cohabitating? <laughs> this one, demo, demo, you must answer this. Uh, is it okay to have another side lady whilst you are cohabitating with someone? 
I mean, for me, I would say, no, it's not okay. It's mm. not okay. You're going to bring some competition between you and the lady and the other one. Do you get it? Once there are two people involved, mm -hmm. this one needs your attention, this one needs your attention. This one is doing something the other is not doing. So at the end of the day, you put yourself in the middle. Yeah, and but you are not cohabiting with both of them. You are cohabiting with one. And yes. So he's asked, David is asking whether it's okay to have a side lady whilst you are cohabiting with them. Maybe if, if you have a side lady and then there's trouble, yeah, you run here. But <laughs> for me, it's not. Because mm. you, are, you are actually cohabiting with a person to get to know the person more, which mm -hmm. may lead to marriage. Yeah. So why would you want to have somebody else? Is, is it always the intent that cohabiting leads to marriage? Usually it leads to marriage. Mm. Yes. But then why some, people to to, some people too, it's just for the game. I don't know what game you're talking <laughs> about. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is coming from Abina. Abina says, my hubby, I'm sure that means husband. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My husband went out with his friends around 11 a.m. this morning. Immediately he left. I started feeling dizzy and started vomiting. I called him and uh, and told him what was happening to me. Till now, he's still not back. Hmm. Wow. I don't know what to do. I'm still not well, and there's no food too in the house. Wow. What is marriage itself? Wow. Hey. Well, I'm not sure. This should be. I think I think this is Ab Abna is a. Uh, I don't know. Maybe a bit of frustration in there, but. We'll how many? How many? How many days now? She should be reporting to the police if they are. Well, I think she said this morning. And oh, so this morning. It's about eleven. Uh, okay. I, I uh, hope has she called, has has she called in or the husband's friends. So this is also coming from Asantua, and Asantua says, "Please, if cohabitation is one-sided, as in the man staying with the woman only, and not the other way, due to reasons being that the man is staying with his cousins, but the girl always feel the guy is taking advantage of her. Uh -huh. Please, is this right?" I, I'm not really, but I'm, I think I'm assuming um, she's trying to describe a scenario where a man is giving an excuse. No, a man is staying, cohabiting with a lady, but I mean, he actually stays in the lady's house or apartment. And the reason is because perhaps he lives with his cousins. And so it's best. And I think um, the lady feels the guy is taking advantage of her. And so. Asantua is asking whether this is right. Oh. Hmm. I, I just hope I've been able to explain well. I still, I still don't get you it. still don't get it. Asantua, if there's any way you can, you can resend your message, uh, make it a little bit more yeah. clearer, because I'm trying so hard to uh, understand and also yeah. try to explain. Okay, So we'll be grateful if you can send that uh, back. Yeah. So what are some of the challenges with cohabitating? Well... From the legal point of view, I mean, uh, but it, it's illegal. So where, where from legal point again? Oh, it's not. <laughs> it's not <laughs> illegal. It's not. It's not illegal. Cohabitation is not illegal. No, it's not illegal. Um, if if you should mention the word illegal to any lawyer mm. or any legal brain, he or she understands that um, illegal means that it is breaching. Um, a particular law. Law, okay. But there's no law infringing on, on co that. Co mm. cohabitation. Okay. The only thing is that because the law does not recognize you as a uh, spouse, husband and wife, it means that um, you go in at your own risk. risk. I mean, you go in at your own risk. Whatever property that you may acquire together, you will not be entitled to it in the area of spousal property or spousal rights because okay. you are not a spouse. Yeah. Aha. Uh -huh. So that is one uh, disadvantage. And usually it is disadvantageous towards the women. I mean, it is disadvantageous towards the women. I mean, both of you would acquire property and then the man just, for some reason, whenever the, uh, the arrangement doesn't work, you know, the man usually walks away with... Um, with almost everything, leaving the woman with nothing. Uh, the laws have tried to cure that, but on a spousal uh, point of view, we have PNDC law 111, but even in that provision, the law clearly mentions spouse. So it is a woman or it is a man who has been recognized legally mm. as a spouse. Not a cohabitee. Not a cohabitee. Yeah, no, <laughs> not a cohabitor or cohabitee. <laughs> yes. So, so it's like you um, caveat emptor, you know, mm. buyer beware. Okay. Uh -huh. So you do it at your own risk. Risk, okay. Yes, you do it at your own mm. risk. I mean, in fact, it's a question I was even going to come to. I, yeah. I wanted to find out whether the laws in our country 
has any backing on cohabitation? No, mm. no. Um, it's my understanding that there are some moves to push this because uh, the constitution says that we should not discriminate against any person uh, based on any um, grounds. So you shouldn't, um, it would be discriminatory to say you have uh, attained the status of husband and wife, so you are entitled to this property. Mm -hmm. You haven't attained the status of husband and wife yet, so you are not entitled to this property. That in itself is discrimination. So I believe that there will be some laws here and there, I mean, um, um, pushing the, the idea that, hey, the type of arrangement that uh, a man and a woman decide to have should not be discriminatory against them with respect to any entitlements to, to, to property that they might have acquired together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I believe there will be some laws over there being pushed, yes. I see. People, people argue that men benefit more. From cohabitation? Yes. Yes, I mean, I mean, let's be frank. Men benefit more. Devil, do you agree? Not entirely. Not entirely? Yeah, to some extent. To some extent. Yeah. Why? Yeah. I mean, there are some men, when, when two people are cohabiting, what happens? We have men, for instance, cooking. We have men who can really cook. We have men who can take care of the home. Mm. We have men who can do laundry and, you know, still provide for the home. I think people are saying that men benefit more because of the sexual aspect of it. Oh. Okay. Yes. And the fact that some men too don't know how to do this kind of hard chores and the rest. So they feel the men benefit more. Yes, the ladies know how to take care of the home. They know how to cook. They know how to do all those things. But I don't think entirely the men benefit more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Be before, before Leslie, you speak, I'm, I'm going to come to you and ask you what are some of the benefits yes. since you agree. Yes. that men benefit more. Yes. But before you go on, this is coming from uh, Kwesi. Kwesi says, Hi, I'm Kwesi. I think it benefits both parties because they get to know each other. Because mm. um, some time ago, my girlfriend came to spend a week at my place. And my guy, Quaron, Quaron. <laughs> but on the phone, we know the Quaron said. <laughs> that be where I know say living together is different from the yeah, communication the we have oh, on phone. Oh. So to me, dear, and Kaidua, make them allow them spend some months yeah, together yeah. if they are left with few months for them to get married. Yeah. So I think Kwesi is advocating that, I mean, before people get married, they should be, uh, they should be allowed to spend some time together, yeah. Yeah. live together to see, you know, one of, well, two things yeah. before they finally, you know, get yeah. married. Because yeah. for his case, Charlie, when he tried it in Tokwan Kwan, <laughs> but on phone, they know the carol self. They sound so nice and everything. You know, there is something about living with someone. Mm. Yeah. Even your own siblings gets to a point you mm. wish you're never staying with them. I mean, th th I think there's something natural with, with human beings. You get you know, tired of space. people. In, the, in their space. Yeah, yeah. In their it space. gets to a point where, Charlie, you just don't want to live. That's true. I mean, I mean uh, take, uh, take the universities, for instance. Yeah. I mean, when I was in the university, uh. um, I never, um, apart from the traditional halls, I, I never opted for more than two in a room. And um, because of the the space and the privacy it came with yeah i mean i was always in a room with one other person and that's the end yeah of it. that was it because mm. even with that arrangement sometimes you are coming back from lectures and you know you have a picture perfect scenario of your room you alone aha uh -huh. how much more two three four so i think naturally people love their space yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. people 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 love their space mm. Mm. yeah I, I i agree so so back back to the discussion yes. um you agree that men benefit more uh -huh. what are some of those benefits why what what are those benefits that's making you say that you think or i mean you you agree that men benefit more okay so i'm looking at it from the legal point of view okay um <coughs> as for the domestic uh activities i don't think there's 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 a set of domestic activities tagged where women's duties yeah. or men's, men's duties. duties yeah but i'm looking at it from the legal point of view where the two of you, because you know that you are living together, you contribute towards a particular goal, a particular venture, a particular business. Do you have to? Well, with familiarity would come, um, with familiarity comes trust. Okay. Yes. So the two of you work hard to acquire property. Mm -hmm. 
And because there is no status of spouse that has been achieved, I mean, let's face it, the man easily gets away with all of this. The man can easily suck the woman out of the house. You understand that? And then uh, where does the woman go? Uh, what happens to her contributions? What uh, the lawyers will say, what cause of action does she have towards the properties or the investments or the ventures that mm -hmm. she has helped you acquire, especially when she has also not achieved the status of spouse. Okay. So I think the men benefit more, and it is, it is, it is, it is unfortunate. Yes, it I is see. unfortunate. So then from, 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 from point of law, it's, it comes across as though the men will, will even always opt for cohabitating then <laughs> because then they tend to benefit more. <laughs> then well, I'm sure this one that you are no, 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 no. Ah, You don't agree to this one. <laughs> <laughs> you don't agree to this one today. I mean, there, there is an extent to the benefit. Mm. Yes. I mean, women easily sacrifice. Yes. Do you get it? Women is... Your lady can just give you her last money. And so you are thinking that just for that... Yeah, to some extent, the men benefit more. But then it's a 50 the same thing. No, it's a 50 50 for me. Really? Yes. What happens if the, man is the one, if the man is the one providing for the two of you? Mm -hmm. Where does he benefit more at the end of the day? So Do then you get it. So, so that's. I think it's a 50 50. I think that that will come to the domestic part of the domestic yeah, arrangement you know, oh. or benefits that are in there. So then it, it comes across as though domestically it will benefit the woman more. Yeah, interesting. So, lawyer, yes. this one I'd like to tell you. And I think you. psychologically, uh -huh. the, the, the men also will benefit more. For that, I'll, I'll, I'll go for it. Why? The women also psychologically will benefit? Chairman, you, might, you go out, your day is messed up, and then you come home, the lady talks to you, and all this thing. You just. It's the same thing. <laughs> for, for this particular <laughs> devil, I think it's the same thing. If, if the lady also goes out and comes home <laughs> with a hell of issues, I mean, you, 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 are, you are supposed to be the one to listen and possibly soothe her up, isn't it? Yes. I, I, this one, demo, this one, I don't agree with you. I think this one, this one is, is both ways. Mm. But, but Leslie, I was going to ask you a question. Yes. Eh? So, it, is, is there any point, should I say, after or any point duration of cohabiting that um, the, 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 the female, the, a woman, can attain you know, spousal um, uh, support spousal in, terms, in terms of any breakup? No. There isn't any, even if it's, oh, like for example, I know when it comes to even... Uh, 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 people who live in people's houses, yeah. you know, after a certain number of years, they tend to become almost the owners. The, the, I, I know there's some part of the law mm. that advantages them in a way. Okay, so even with stuff. this, should maybe after five years, after ten years of cohabiting, shouldn't isn't there any law that at least, you know, gives the woman some spousal support or I mean the party some spousal su see, support in that regard? Yes. You see, you keep using the word spousal. Okay. You keep using the word spousal. Mm -hmm. And like I said, the status of spouse does not um, arise from merely cohabiting with somebody, uh, no matter what. I think the, uh, the, there's a push in parliament right now. Like I may be wrong, but there's a push in parliament <coughs> for the recognition that, hey, s um, people who choose to, 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 to cohabitate with others mm. can at <coughs> least have some spousal um, entitlement because it's sad. <laughs> You know, yeah, um, yeah. it's sad. It's, it's I, sad. I, I don't think the more agrees with you. Oh. Sad. He doesn't think it's sad. Oh, it's, it's sad because <laughs> there, are, there are instances where people have cohabited for so many years, mm. giving birth to one, two, yeah. three, and still you don't want to marry me. What are you waiting for? No, no, see, that, that's, that's, that's no. I think that's a different. No, that's, yeah, that's a different that's, arrangement. That's a different arrangement. Because I mean, then I think cohabiting comes across as two people. Deciding voluntarily yeah. to, to go into living together without having to have that whole institution of marriage. Really. Yes, yes, I'm looking at inheritance, <coughs> yeah, and then um, the right to own property. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these are the two things I'm looking at so, inheritance and then the right to own property. Okay, um, what is in it for me and my children? Yeah, uh, sure. supposing children come out of it because um, if we scrutinize the laws. The laws make provision for children to be able to benefit from the situation where 
uh, their parent or whoever it is dies uh, without making a will. That's to die in test it. Yeah. But the laws also is, is, is clear. It's, it's spouse. Okay. It still states spouse. It still states <coughs> spouse. So, so if spouse you haven't attained the status, status of spouse, spouse then I mean, then you might as well just forget it. Exactly. Well, I'm going to go on my very last break. When I'm back, the phone lines will be open and I'll announce the phone line as well. But when we come back, there's a question I have and that is, what rights would parents have in a cohabiting situation? Please stay with us. We'll be back shortly. All right, so welcome back. Uh, if you're just joining us, uh, it's just at the point where we are going to open the phone lines. We are still discussing cohabiting. Before I left, I did say that I did ask a question, which is what we are going to be discussing now. That So what rights do parents have in a situation of uh, their, their, what, uh, sorry, their, their, their children cohabiting? Okay, so that's what we'll be discussing. However, the phone lines are open. Feel free, call us. Keep your text messages also coming. But call us and let us have a discussion. The number... It's 0555-657278. 0555-657278. Call us and let's talk. Leslie. Yes. What rights, devil, what rights <laughs> would parents have in a situation of cohabiting with their, you know, their, their, their children? This is a tough question. You know, now, in Ghana, we know when you are is it 18 years, mm. you are practically an adult, mm -hmm. so you can make decisions mm -hmm. for yourself and all. But no matter what, even when you are, uh, how do you call it, 30 or 25, your parents still have some control over you. Control. We believe, yes, we believe they, they, they can make decisions that can affect you positively or negatively. Mm. So... <laughs> to me, they still have control over you. They can help you make decisions and all, but to say they have right over you not to cohabit or not, it's a tough one. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> Leslie. Well, the rights that a parent has <laughs> or parents have towards their children mm. is eternal. I mean, the rights continue to persist until the parents are no more until the child is no more. But if you say rights, uh, rights that the parents have over at, um, the awards who are cohabiting, uh, I'm trying to narrow down the concept of rights. Yeah. The only rights that your parents have over you um, deciding to co co cohabitate with someone um, is to maybe advise you. They have the only right they have is an advisory right. You know, they can make you look at things from a certain point of view, chipping in culture and stuff like that. So you hear things like, my son, my daughter, um, our culture does not allow this. Bring the man home, let him perform certain rights that are due you. You understand that? So let him properly ask for your hand in marriage. Nah, mm. that <laughs> Uh -huh. Otherwise, we uh, will be and as we will be and all those stuff. But if you say rights, uh, yes. So the only right a parent has is advice. Let's see, let me hold you on, on yes. this one. We'll come back to the rights. Uh, I have a call on the line. Call her your name. Good evening. And where you are calling from? Good evening. I'm Kisi calling from Can you Can you please speak up a little bit? I'm Kisi calling from Cantonment. Hi. Let's hear you. Yes, I want to find out from the, the lawyer. Okay, In a situation where the woman is married traditionally, and then the husband go behind her and wed another woman without her knowledge, what benefits is she out to collect? Um, can you make your last statement again? I didn't quite get that. I said the woman, the man married the woman for 15 years. Uh huh. Traditionally. And then only traditionally uh, pay the price price. And then went behind the woman and wedded another lady also without the woman knowledge. And the woman is having three children currently in the house as of now. What is the benefit out for the woman? What, what what is a woman going to do? Is she going to see a lawyer? For so is she having any rights now? Okay, um, so um, 
Leslie has a question for you before you hang up. Please stay. Um, yeah. The second, um, the second marriage, was yeah. it also a traditional type of marriage? Or no, she did uh, the traditional and wear her hair at church. Oh, oh. Okay, so you want to know what what uh, must be done? Whether uh, she has to go to a lawyer or what 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 benefits can be? Uh, because the woman said then she is ending the first woman with the three children of the man. She wants to go, yeah. Okay. okay, thank you so much for calling. I'm sure you will, 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 will look at it. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Um, <clears throat> to begin with, uh, the type of marriage she's talking about, if I got her right, was um, the customary type of marriage. Mm -hmm. And one feature of this uh, type of marriage is that it is potentially polygamous. Okay. Customary marriage is potentially polygamous. This means that the man can have unto himself another as many well, women as uh, he can take care of. There's also another um, concept in law called conversion. So if a man decides to convert his marriage from customary marriage to statutory marriage, you know statutory marriage is monogamous. It recognizes one man, one woman. So if he has achieved the status of <coughs> statutory marriage with the other woman, then <coughs> it excludes all others. Okay. You understand that? It excludes all others. Now, if there is any attempt on his part to marry another, uh, it will amount to an offense called bigamy in law. Okay. Yes. So um, the dissolution of customary marriage is rather simple. Just presents their drinks. And then mm -hmm. that is it. So if the woman decides to dissolve <coughs> the customary marriage that she contracted with the man, she should just see the elders and then they present the drinks to the man. And then that is by way of dissolution. Yes. Okay. And 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 so in, in that in, in, in that in that situation, because yeah. she mentioned that they have children, in that situation, what does she get? She's a spouse. I mean, she's a spouse. You know, the law recognizes customary marriage. Okay. So that she has been able to successfully uh, receive the status of spouse. So she qualifies as spouse. So she can see a lawyer then? Yes, she can see a lawyer then. She All has right. spousal rights. Okay. Yes. At this point, uh, <coughs> I mean, she has spousal rights, so she can see a lawyer. And then take it up from, from there. Yeah. Unfortunately, this is all time can permit us. <laughs> and so I'm going to draw down the curtains. I believe it's been a very interesting conversation. Uh, let's keep the convo on going on our social media pages. Ask the questions. Bring in your suggestions and let's discuss. Leslie and then uh, demo. demo will still be available to send you some answers. Okay. And so <laughs> I will end by, by, by saying thank you so much for being part of our evening. Um, I have a special thank you to the policemen doing awesomely lately. I mean, the police in town are doing very well, yeah. especially the Pukwasi police people. They've done something really nice for me this particular week, and I'm very uh, grateful. And to all other people, thank you for being part of this evening. Uh, we'll meet again next week. Stay safe. Stay safe.